this video we're going to discuss string manipulation. So let's just use a word right here and we're going to use a baseball team. So we're going to say the Astros. Now you can see I capitalized the first letter of the Astros, but what if we wanted to have our program make sure it always showed only the uppercase version. So everything in caps lock. So I'm going to say dot upcase and in this uh, certain situation uh, upcase is a built-in method it's something in the string class and if I print this out and hit run you can see that it's converted it so it's all upcase now I can also do down case hit run and it converts it all to down case I can also do swap case hit run and you can see that it literally swaps the case of it now you also have ones like uh, reverse and it swaps out the exact order and the other neat thing you can do things like chaining these together so I could do that and then hit upcase and it makes all of them upcase and uh, and also reverses them so this is something uh, this is a Ruby construct called method chaining. Now you may wonder, I'm going to get rid of this, uh, this part of it. You may wonder, why would I ever need to make something all upcase? Is that contrived or, you know, why is that something you'd want to do? And I'll give you one really practical example of this. Uh, when I'm creating a, a basic search engine for an application, one thing that very few built-in search uh, search engines do, uh, like the Postgres database search and some of these, they handle capitalization with strings or, or they handle case management very poorly. So I might do, uh, you may be looking and I'm going to do this all as a string. So you might be looking for something I don't know, like milk, and it's going into a search engine, and you might type in, though, milk with a lowercase m, and unless you build a number of different things to handle and make sure that your uh, database search engine is completely case insensitive where it doesn't care, then a one really easy way to fix this is just by returning all the values and doing something like upcase or downcase. So when you run both of these, hit run, and you can see it prints them out so they're exactly the same. So you might do something like uh, as your items are getting saved, and this is something for enterprise applications. You actually see this a lot because it's a way of simplifying uh, case insensitive search where they might just save all the items automatically, whether the person types it in upcase or not, they might just save all those values in all capital letters and then that way when they do the search they can call upcase on it and then the values get returned and you don't have to worry about oh well what happens if they uh, you know put uh, the K on uh, at the very end in capitals or you know is that gonna throw it off uh, it just makes it really nice and simple uh, now I wanted to show you so I showed you about four methods or so and talked about method chaining, uh, the string class, and I'm opening up the ruby-doc.org, and this is the string class uh, page. If you look at methods, you can see all of the different types of methods that are out there. So I wanted to show a few of those, like you can see down case right here. And uh, one thing you can see, down case with a... Uh, with an exclamation mark and just a regular down case right here. And uh, in Ruby circles, usually people are going to uh, call the exclamation mark a bang just because it's a little bit easier to say. Uh, but this is something that I'll show you what the difference is here. So say I want to create a variable called M and save milk upcased version. So if I hit run right here, or I'm sorry, 
if I print out M, you can see that it's made at uh, upcase right here. Um, but there's a difference because, and let me go to show you because I have some good examples. Um, we can do downcase or upcase because it's the exact same. Um, so right here, downcase returns a copy of the string with all uppercase letters replaced with their lower uh, lowercase counterparts downcase with a bang or upcase with a bang uh, it's going to return nil if no changes were made and then the case replacement is effective um, only in the SCSI reason which you don't really have to worry about but typically when you see a bang what the difference is is it usually means that it's changing the actual value itself uh, not really something you have to worry about in this particular situation um, but in uh, in a lot of cases when you see a bang what that means in Ruby it usually means that it's changing the original version of whatever that uh, variable was uh, not really something you have to worry about here usually I'm I will just leave it out but I just wanted you to see it in case you uh, uh, in case you wanted to ever um, know why some methods had an exclamation mark and others didn't. This is something you'll see in Rails a lot where they'll do something like have a, uh, uh, say you wanted to update a value. So you can have some code and then you'll see a method like update and then whatever code you want to update. And in your production code, you'll see something like this. But when you're doing development, then you'll usually see a bang. The, the everything's identical. The only difference is the bang will return a error if there's a problem, and the uh, without a bang it won't return an error. It'll fail silently, which is usually what you'd want in production anyway. But uh, so just so you know, there you're going to see a lot of methods that have a uh, a bang and then a regular version, and it usually is because the bang means that something is going to happen either something you're going to be alerted of something or it's going to change the original value so this these are all the different file or uh, string uh, string methods and you can see there are a ton of them so I definitely recommend playing around with quite a few of these because uh, you're going to see all kinds of fun ones that you can play around with. So uh, not all these have to deal with string manipulation. Uh, some of these could be uh, uh, in relation to search. So a good one is, say, match, which we'll get into later in the course where you can use different regular expressions to search inside of a string. Uh, one of the next videos we're going to get into is substitution. So you can find a value in a string and substitute another value in in place of it. Uh, you can find the index of a certain character. So all kinds of different uh, methods. Definitely recommend you play around with them because there's no way we could go through every single one. I know you could probably have an entire course dedicated just to uh, the string class in Ruby. So um, play around with it. Uh, you know, see which ones you like, which ones you may want to try in an application. But these are some basic ones. So hopefully I gave you some good practical reasons on why you'd want to use them and uh, you, what you could do with them in a program. And in the next video, we're going to get in some more practical string classes and, uh, and start using those out in real-world programs.